Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Liverpool. It was the first round of midweek Premier League games and the start of the festive, busy season of football, my favourite time of the year for football. And it was Liverpool versus Tottenham at Anfield, the first uh, real top of the table clash that we properly had this season, you know, uh, partway through and you seeing some of the better teams um, that have emerged towards the top. And it was a, a very, very hard fought game. It was a, it was a game in which... Tottenham did exactly uh, what we expected them to do, what they've been doing the whole of this season so far, what's made them so successful so far. And we, um, you know, plucked away with that determination that we've shown so many times, um, but also ultimately at the end of the day with the quality to go and get those goals um, and get and get the win. Obviously with a bit of luck spiced into it as well, you know, you can't beat great teams or very good teams without a bit of luck, uh, and we definitely had that in the game. Uh, in terms of the starting lineup, I think there there was only really one. Um, well, there's only one real piece of news that kind of came out, and, and that was the fact that that Matip, uh, having come off at half time against Fulham, was not uh, ready for this game. I think Klopp said he might be back for the weekend game. Uh, but he wasn't here today, and uh, instead of Nat Phillips starting, it was Reese Williams, the teenager, who was starting at centre-back. So a big, big game for him. We know how good Harry Kane's been, and he's been bullying defenders in the Premier League uh, all season, uh, both himself and Son. So, you know, going into the game, we always knew it was going to be an absolute, um, real difficult job for, for Reese Williams and Fabinho. Um, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how his performance a little later on and, and how impressive it was. But uh, yeah, it was going to be a tough. It was going to be a daunting task for him going into it. And, and he came out. He came out passing with flying colours. Other than that, the team was very much as we expected. Um, kind of a lack of rotation. I think Klopp knowing that this is an important game. We both, both Tottenham and Liverpool, drop points at the weekend. Um, and our performance against Fulham just wasn't good enough, uh, and so we needed we needed a reaction in this game. One, just to get over that Fulham kind of hangover, but but also two to uh, continue to remind both Tottenham and everyone else in the Premier League that we are still the champions. We are still the best team in this Premier League, uh, and we are still favourites to retain uh, and win the, the Premier League this season. First half went exactly as I said at the beginning, how you would expect it. We had a lot of the ball, none of the the kind of lethargicness, none of the slow play that we saw against Fulham. And it's, it was great to see uh, us passing the ball, you know, one-touch passing, getting the ball out wide, moving it from left to right, getting the ball into the front men. Bobby Firmino was coming deep to collect the ball. He had, a, other than the goal, which we'll talk about, I think Bobby Firmino had a really, really good game. Um, I think the way he linked up the play, he came short at the right times. He, he kind of stayed further up. And in the second half in particular, Sadio Mane kind of took up more of that central uh, striker position. But just it, the thing that was most frustrating about it was, you know, why can't we play like this every week? <laughs> you know, if we had played like that against Fulham, we would have absolutely tore them apart. There's no way they would have lived with us. And so I guess that was the, the positive from the game, but the slight frustration uh, given the game that we didn't win on the weekend. But it was all, yeah, it was all us in the first half, you know, causing causing chaos. Um, we had a couple of chances, a couple of shots on goal throughout the game, actually, that were just straight at Hugo Lloris and then, you know, five, a couple of yards either side and we would have scored maybe a couple more goals. Um, but, you know, lots of chances being made. It wasn't that we didn't have chances. Um, great play from the front three. Curtis Jones as well, I thought, had a fabulous game. Um, one of his... Probably, I'd say, his best Liverpool game this season, I think, from Curtis Jones. I was really, really impressed with how he uh, drove the ball from the field, how he picked it up from deep, linked up with Robertson and Mane on the left-hand side. I thought that was fabulous. Um, he had a couple of chances himself as well, nicking the ball back from Aurier in the first half as well in, the, in, in Tottenham's penalty box, uh, getting a strike away, which was saved by Hugo Lloris. So I thought he had a fabulous first half. Um, unfortunately for us, we did break the deadlock in the first half. It kind of... As the half went on, you thought, well, maybe, you know, Tottenham were defending very solidly like they have, and you knew that first goal was going to be important, and it was it was very fluky, shall we say. It was it was good play by Curtis Jones to break into the box, um, but then the ball came out to Salah, and he took a first-time shot where earlier in the half he'd smashed the ball straight at Hugo Lloris, but this time round, uh, fortunately for us, you know, no way it's obviously meant or anything, looped up off, I think it was Alderweireld, or a mixture of Alderweireld and, and Eric Dyer. And the ball just looped over Hugo Lloris. He had absolutely no chance of uh, of saving the ball. Uh, and it looped over him. And right in front of the cop as well. Good to see the fans there. They were able to see um, that fantastic goal. And going ahead was huge. 
Um, but then at that point, with about 15 or so minutes to go until half time, the key obviously was around making sure we get into half time. Um, one nil up and we weren't able to do that uh, not no soon after had we had we kind of scored uh, Tottenham did exactly what we all knew they were going to do uh, and that they have done so many times this season and that is score a goal on the breakaway it was it was um, good play out from the back from them uh, great ball from LaSalle so I think Reese Williams tried to step up but he was you know probably centimeters if not millimeters away from timing it perfectly and getting Son offside um, it was very weird, though, with, with VAR, how they didn't go with the dotted lines and all this type of stuff. It was kind of just a very distant look, and they drew a line, and, and that was it. So maybe there was something behind the scenes, but we didn't see at home. But anyways, that we're not going to talk about that because it's immaterial in this game, but just very strange. Um, it was a great finish by Son. He, Son's just having one of those seasons where you can already tell what's going to happen. He's just going to bag everything. Um, he, he's done it so far this season, and he's just been... He's just been immense, and uh, he's an absolutely quality player. A player that you know, I'd love at Liverpool. Doesn't really fit in the team, maybe ahead of any of the uh, of the other front three. But uh, an absolutely fabulous player, and uh, gotta gotta respect him because he is uh, yeah he is fantastic. But going into the second half, then it would be it was interesting to see how Tottenham would approach the game, whether they would continue to sit back um, and maybe try and hit us on the counter, or whether they would kind of impose themselves a bit more on the game. And they kind of honestly did a little bit of both. They kind of sat back when they needed to, soaked up the pressure from us, but then they did break and they did have a couple of really, really good chances. Bergwijn with a shot which came up off the post, post and Fabinho was actually quite lucky to to clear the ball away um, over the bar, but that was a very, very good chance. And then from the subsequent corner, Harry Kane just headed the ball into the ground and the ball bounced up over the, uh, over the crossbar and that could have easily been... Um, uh, at least an attempt on target had he uh, had he headed it kind of towards the goal rather than into the ground and so Tottenham at this point were maybe growing in a little bit of confidence um, they were kind of getting into the game a little bit more but then we kind of slipped back into the routine that we were in in the first half which I thought was really really impressive where we, we kept the ball well kept moving it well um, against Fulham I talked around the game not being a genie game this was a genie game it, he was, it was perfect, both in terms of the way he just cut off kind of all of the counter-attacks that they were doing, um, but he was also able to tick the midfield over, you know, making sure he got the ball into the likes of Curtis Jones or, or the two uh, full-backs that were wide or into one of the front three. This was a game that showcased every single one of Genie Wine Adams' qualities and why he's so important. The Fulham game, for me, didn't, did not. Um, what was interesting as well in the second half was the fact that we made no substitutes. Obviously, Klopp had made a, has made a you know a big deal on one hand around the need for five substitutes, but on the same hand, not making a substitution, only 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 planning to make a substitution right at the end, which we didn't even get to make with Naby Keita coming on. And I, I think for me that was just one reason of our best team was out there. The team that could win that game was on the pitch. Uh, and I don't think people like Ox or Keita uh, were fit enough to really impact the game. And people like Divock just, you know, haven't been on form. And so um, it was, it was I guess, strange but understandable to see why Jurgen Klopp uh, didn't make any substitutions, you know. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it all, it all paid off. Uh, we kept pressing. Mane had a chance in the second half as well off the bar. Um, and and we, we were just the ones really forcing it. I know Jose Mourinho has come out after the game and said the best team lost. That's just... Mourinho BS um, I think we we forced the play we uh, we had more of the ball we, it's not as if we were just kind of passing it around aimlessly like you know we have been guilty of in the past and other teams are we were using it to make chances and we made a lot of chances the, the shots on target we had across the game were much higher than Tottenham's um, and I think ultimately that's what led to us deserving uh, and getting that goal in the 90th minute great corner from Andy Robertson another assist on the season for him and an absolutely bullet header from Bobby Firmino it was absolutely fantastic. And he he sprinted down the other end of the pitch, almost Emmanuel Adebayor style, uh, to celebrate in front of the fans, which was absolutely fabulous to see. You know, that that type of goal in an empty stadium, just something just doesn't sit right about a, a huge goal like that in a, in a top of the table clash with no fans. But fortunately, there were fans in the stadium and they were able to witness that fantastic header. Really, really glad for Bobby Firmino as well. Um, Every time people maybe start to doubt him, he comes up with a goal like this. You know, the Leicester game was one. This game is another one. I see the importance of this one being higher. One, because it was against Tottenham. And two, because it was in the final minute as well. And I think for him as well, it capped off a really, really good performance. I think he, as I said earlier, he did really, really well. Um, 
and yeah, in just in terms of his all-round play, um, as well as how he linked up with with Salah and uh, and Mane as well. But now we'll move on to my man of the match, and and my man of the match. Um, <laughs> This one was actually a bit of a tough one. Uh, Reese Williams, for me, was up there just because of how effortless he kind of made defending seem. Uh, we've seen how um, Tottenham can break away so well uh, against other teams. Um, and him, himself and Fabinho cut out the majority of those attacks. They'll always get one or two through. Um, and I don't blame him for, you know, trying to step up with Son. It was literally millimetres away. So he had a really good game. But for me, it was Curtis Jones. Absolutely fantastic performance of him. We've seen... Uh, I guess glimpses, you know, we, we've seen him put in solid performances, but we've seen glimpses of how good he can be. But this was the game where I saw him, you know, um, like play really, really well for an extended period of time uh, throughout the game. He, he controlled the ball in midfield really well, kept the ball ticking with Henderson and Wijnaldum, um, you know, made those runs, dribbled past a couple of plays. He's got a bit of skill about him, you know. Don't, don't think he's just around a passer, you know. He's got a little bit about him as well, Curtis Jones. And I thought he was just absolutely fantastic. He's played a number of games as well, so there's no fatigue coming into his game or anything. Um, so he's done amazingly. And then finally, guys, the shout out to Klopp for this episode. It's kind of tough to say, but maybe stick with Reese Williams for, for the couple of games uh, and maybe don't rush Joel Matip back. Just in, just based on how impressive Reese Williams was, uh, I think he deserves another go uh, as well. But that's it for this episode, guys. It was a fantastic win. Takes us three points ahead of Tottenham. And we've got another game of the weekend, which I'm looking forward to. The games are coming thick and fast now. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.